Hey, Amy and I are hopping on here tonight. Um, we are wanting to talk about um, giving and receiving, not just gifts, but um, actually, I just needed to make sure I invited Amy on there. Um, there we go. Okay, so we're about uh, the Christmas season coming up and um, hey, giving hey. and receiving um, gifts. And then uh, we just started talking about um, giving and receiving in other ways, how we hear and receive from others and how we give to others and, um, you know, how they receive from us. So um, I'll pass it over to Amy real quick who just joined us from out in Illinois. <laughs> hey, Kim. Hey, Brad. Hi, everyone else that I haven't seen come on. <laughs> um, you know, for me, and I'm sure for a lot of us, you know, we, um, we get into this holiday season, and when we slow down from the hustle and bustle, um, you know, we start thinking about <laughs> – thanks, Brad <laughs> – I like that. Um, you know, we start thinking about the actual real gift that was, um, and hey, Lori, um, and then um, so that gift of Christ being born. And as I was kind of thinking about this um, over this past week, um, you know, I was reading back through the scriptures, you know, all the scriptures in the Old Testament and Micah and Isaiah and um, how they were prophesying about this child being born and, you know, being the savior and the government will rest on his shoulders and all of this stuff. And hey, Lori. I, it, you know, um, got my, my head kind of going. <laughs> um, and I was just kind of thinking, you know, like they knew that Messiah was going to be born to them at some point. Um, but I also feel like maybe that they felt or knew or thought that um, that this baby would be born into, um, hey, Destiny, um, that, they would, that the baby would be born into, um, into royalty or a governing office um, because they knew he was going to be from David's line. Hey, Deidre. Um, but what I was beginning to think about, you know, is that it wasn't that case at all. You know, um, he was born to a young girl that most would deem unfit. And um, he was uh, birthed in a stable that most um, would see as um, like, um, like unclean, unacceptable. I lost my words there for a second. And then placed in a manger, which was like a feeding trough, which was absolutely unacceptable for anybody um you know, a common, much less, you know, a, a royal uh, baby, you know, so it's just the most uncommon, unexpected um, uh, display of this royal messiah. And it, and as I thought about that, I mean, I know all of us have pondered that at some point or another. Um, but as I thought about that, it, it just kind of made me think like, what if the things that um, we're praying for and hoping for come in the form and fashion of unexpected. Um, I think a lot of us um, jump at the, oh, yeah, 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 I want unexpected, unexpected. But I don't think sometimes that we really fully grasp the, the depths that that unexpected um, could bring, like what that means. And I think sometimes that means that it's um, incomplete and right. it might come um, maybe from someone that um, you might even struggle receiving from. And so maybe you'd like your knee jerk reaction would be to like push it away. Um, you know, and I also think that a lot of times um, that, you know, we don't have any issues receiving from Christ when we just, it's very obvious that it's from him. Um, but what if he's choosing to answer us um, in a way that could be a lesson, a lesson in receiving, a lesson in humility. Um, and like I was saying, you know, a lesson in receiving something um, 
that looks nothing like the answer to your prayer. Right. And as I was thinking about that, um, the Lord loves to remind me about this a lot. Um, you know, we were, um, my husband and I uh, were living in Tennessee and had lived in Tennessee since right after we got married. And um, it, I don't know, it's like a little over six and a half years ago now, you know, un you know, the employment status changed. And so we, you know, we're looking for work and, you know, we were doing like what everyone else is doing, you know, you were looking for work and you were praying for the Lord to provide, you know, the right job, you know, the job that he had placed for you, the, the job he has planned for you. And through a series of events of very obvious God acts came a potential job back in Illinois, where the both of us were from. And we both were looking at each other going, um, no, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, you know, Tennessee was home. Um, but there was just no denying the Lord was opening doors. He wanted us back in Illinois. So here was this gift from God answering our, our prayers. He was, he was giving us the potential for a job offer, but it was in a place and in a package and in a way that we did not want to receive. So we went ahead and received it. We made the move. We weren't happy about it. Um, but as we got here, it wasn't easy, like I said, but it still has unfolded in a way that has been very obvious that this is what the Lord had planned for us in this moment in time. And so Absolutely. I just felt like I wanted to really just kind of share that, that we have to really, obviously with discernment, um, heavy discernment and prayer, um, that we look at all things that are um, kind of being gifted to us um, that they might not be prettily, you know, uh, very pre pretty in their packaging. I'm getting right. tongue tied. Right. Um, not their packaging, um, but it might even be like in our situation, it was very obvious that it was God, but it was not any way, shape, or form anything that we wanted to even look at, talk about, or touch. And um, so, you know, it was just, I, I just felt like um, that would be like a good first discussion topic and I think you had something you wanted to share about that as yeah, well just to go in into exactly what you were saying with with examples and I want to say hello I've seen some names come up of some friends that have popped on and yeah um I just ha I'm not really good at uh catching them in between when we're uh getting started here and I also really tried in the beginning when I'm really nervous because this is not my thing, but I'm just being obedient and getting on here. <laughs> um, it's not my thing to be on here, so I'm already nervous. So I, I try to not focus too much on the comments in the very beginning till I get a little relaxed. But, you know, as you were saying about um, things not looking um, like they come in the package that we would think that they would come in, like, you know, Jesus being born to Mary instead of, you know, royal family and things like that. Um, you know, so many of us want to enter into um, a marriage and from the very beginning have everything in it that we've always wanted. And I truly felt like I had that, you know, and I do have that. But from the very beginning, it wasn't, you know, all tied up in the ribbons that I always thought it would be. And although Marty was always the man and always will be the man that I want to spend my life with, like there, we were best friends always. We loved one another deeply, but then life happens and um, there's financial loss, there's loss of loved ones, um, there's stress, there's children and all kinds of things that come against you. And um, as those things come against you, they cause other things to happen. As I, I'd like picture um, packages being delivered like <laughs> by air, rail, ship, you know, all the way across the country on a donkey. And basically, finally, my gift came and it's all like beat up. But when I opened it, it's absolutely perfect. It was not damaged. It still had that fragile stick it, sticker on it and it survived the uh, the um, journey that it came on. And so by saying that, like, you know, all of those things came against Marty and I. And I've talked about this in each of the last videos where you know, we each struggle with depression in our own time and we could have severely damaged our marriage 
and we did hurt one another greatly in our areas of depression and what we struggled with. But in that, we also found a deeper connection and a deeper relationship with God. And um, actually, it brought the marriage into a more spiritual place where we share so much more. And now truly, um, although it didn't come in that I, I don't, I could look at my marriage and say, oh, geez, it's tainted here and there by this and that. And it wasn't the perfect marriage. And I'll, you know, and, and be upset about that. Or I can celebrate the fact that all of these things happened in a very much different way and different, and it came in a different package than I would have ever guessed or ever thought. But I wouldn't trade what it has brought me in at this very moment. And um, and what we have in our relationship. And then that with what you were saying with your with your job, where Marty and I, you know, since we met 22 years ago, we, we bought our first cottage and it was a complete renovation, gutted, gutted a cottage on the South River in Annapolis. And we knew, we were like, we wanna do a renovation business. I love decorating. I went to a school in New York, took classes. He has his master's license in plumbing. He can pretty much do anything. We're gonna do this someday. And time passed. And we thought we had to have so much save to do this or do that and for the right timing and the right moment. And we just kept putting it off and we were doing other things instead of what we really felt on our heart to do. And every time we did the other things, they failed. And it just kind of brought us, you know, into those darker moments that then brought us to where we are now. But um, anyway, our dream has come true as now we've been working together over a year and a half, like doing a renovation business, but it didn't come to us the way that we thought it would. We thought, Oh, we'll be saving up. We'll be able to have enough. We'll like go into it slowly. And unfortunately after Marty had received a really wonderful job, um, his friend passed away and it was his, the owner of the business and um, a partner and they had to, let go of the division that they had hired Marty to head up um, and concentrate on the other part now that that partner was gone. And the next day we pretty much were like, okay, this is our shot. Let's, let's open our own business. And so that's what we, that's what we did. And, um, you know, I have to say that goes along with the packaging that we were just talking about. Had Marty and I not gone through everything that we went through, we would not, I, I don't think we could work. <laughs> 40 to 50 hours a week together doing the things that we do without, you know, strangling one another. But we literally have so much fun and enjoy what we are doing. And then because God um, came into our marriage even more, um, we celebrate that and bring that, you know, into the homes that we go into just by being ourselves. And I'll get into that more later. Um, cause I, you know me, I, I could just keep going on and on and on with the ways that God has given me gifts, <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, not all tied up and pretty. <laughs> yeah. And, and that goes for me too. You know, I, I mean, I have basically been kicking and screaming if I'm just going to be raw and real, <laughs> yeah. um, I've been screaming for six and a half years. Cause I'm, I'm back in a place that. You know, I didn't want to be in the first place. We, you know, never wanted to be back here. Um, and even despite the fact that it's been very obvious that this is where the Lord um, wanted us for this time and this season, um, I don't know that he would have been able to do the work in me that he needed to do um, had he not brought us up here. You know, I don't know that um, I would have had that time with him had we stayed in Nashville, you know. And like I said to Mark, you know, when we left that place, we are just so different um, now than we were um, back in Nashville. And and although our hearts are still there because that's always going to be our home, this has been this place. Um, you know, I was reading about, um, oh, here it is. I knew I had it right in front of me for a reason. Um, this morning I was um, reading about Jacob. Um, when he ran away from his brother and he went to that place and he was um, laying down on a stone pillow, it was a place of like discomfort and he had, you know, like left in fear and um, not in his home. And yet in that place, in that uncomfortable place, 
came um, these dreams, right? Wasn't it the dreams that came to him, like the stair stairway to heaven or whatever? Yes. Yes. Um, let me just get my stories mixed up. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I'm worse than you are. <laughs> um, yeah. So this says like in a stone pillow in a land that seemed desolate, but after dreaming about heaven and angels and promises of my presence, he awoke. Surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. That literally has been my declaration over the last several years is surely the Lord is in this place. I It may not be the most comfortable place. It may not be my favorite place, but surely the Lord has been here in this, right. uh, this quote unquote ugly package that we begrudgingly accepted um, because this is really what he had for us. This was his gift to us was to, you know, purify and refine us and, and create us into the people he created us that he absolutely desired us to be so that he can then move us forward. So a lot of times we have to kind of um, look at some of these packages that aren't really all that pretty and all that great and, and know in, with our discernment, obviously, that this really is from the Lord and allow him to unpack that, that ugly package for right. you. It's absolutely um, amazing. And, you know, and as I was thinking about, you know, this discernment and just, um, um, sorry, I'm losing my mind. Did you have something to say while I've, <laughs> yeah, if I could, actually, you know, I do. <laughs> um, if we could pop back to, um, what you were saying about, um, you know, things don't come the way we want them to come. But if we, if we eventually look back on it, we see, how things transpired and how had they not transpired the way that they would have, they then those things may not have happened. Um, it may not have turned out as good as it would. Now, of course, losing my dad, I would never ever, you know, want, like, if I could change anything like that would be it. Like, I would love to have my dad back here, but I look back to the day of his accident and I, I listened to what God said to me moments before I drove upon the car accident where he said, do not fear what is to come. I will strengthen you and give you courage and I will reward you. And it was like, what did he just say? And I didn't understand. And at the time, because I, I didn't, I was just driving home from my uncle's funeral. I, I thought he was talking about my mortgage. Like, don't fear what's going to happen with your mortgage because of, I, I talked about our financial loss. So I, I was just driving along. But then once I drove upon the accident scene and, everything I still like at months days weeks later I I thought of that what was he talking about I must have misheard him I've even tried different words there like what what is he talking about and then you know as I'm trying to trudge through all of that my mom's trauma and just my own trauma and then Marty's depression and things like that in the months and years after you know I was going like None, nothing that we ever wanted is ever going to happen. I'm never going to write a book. I don't have time to put more, more time with the Lord in. I, you know, I'm never going to have that. Marty's depressed now. I'm never going to have that marriage that I always wanted. We're never going to be in business together. I'm going to be working this job for the rest of my life, you know, and, and things like that. And I had to keep thinking back to, you know, that day and then suddenly because god speaks to me in numbers all the time um the date of the accident came to me and it was 10 23 so of course i look up scriptures you know with 10 23 in them and hebrews 10 23 through 25 actually says let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for god can be trusted to keep his promise now he promised if i would be strong and courageous during that time if I did not have fear of what was going to happen in those moments to follow him speaking to me if I didn't have fear in the days the weeks and the years afterwards and I stood strong in my hope in him that he could be trusted to keep his promise and I look back four years later and I'm like wow okay we have that business I'm writing my book my marriage is amazing and things didn't come together as I would have wanted them to, but God took what happened here on this earth, you know, where we are and where 
we have our own will and where other people's will makes bad things happen to us. <laughs> and God still found a way to make exactly what he told me my entire life would happen, happen. And it didn't come in the package that I would have wanted it in, but it came in a, in, you know, a wonderful package at the right time in my life. And I really, truly looking back outside of wanting my dad here, when I look back at my marriage and everything that transpired in my marriage, and although it's very painful, everything that's happened to us financially, um, I wouldn't change any of it, any of yeah. those things, you know, and because everything has made it worthwhile. And where, where you talk about, um, Come, I would not have come into that deeper relationship. I mean, I was looking for so much healing from the PTSD of, of the accident scene and from some other traumatic events. And that just drove me to a place of needing intimacy with God where I ended up like, you know, we do seek wise counsel, we go to friends, but when we go to him in those places and we and we allow ourselves to step away from all the noise around us that's where we're drawn into some of the most miraculous things that happen to us in our relationship that's when we really truly begin to hear his heart for us and he begins to speak to us in so many more ways and then we begin to see signs and wonders and all these crazy wonderful things that i'm sure we'll do a whole nother <laughs> live one <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I, there is more to that, I'm sure. Um, oh, just to end that, actually, I will end that really quick. Um, and this might tie into something that we're going to go into here in a minute. But um, as you go on to that 1023 to, through 25, it says, And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, to encourage one another. And that's where Amy and I were talking about um, giving and receiving to one another, whether it's encouragement, whether it's, it's um, prophetic words or, you know, just giving hope to other people and receiving hope and encouragement and love. Love is so big. How do we receive and give love to one another? And how do we do it when it's not being received? And how do we receive it when it's not coming from a place that we want it to come from? <laughs> So I'll let you speak. I'm sure there's something in there that. Um, yeah, there was a couple of things that came to mind. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about to to get back to the whole uh, birth of Christ. You know, I was thinking about the, the wise men, you know, um, they were just given a direction, you know, to, to get to Messiah. Right. So they're just, Follow, you know, they heard from these angels. I mean, how awesome is that? And then, you know, here's this star. And I heard a teaching um, at some point a few years ago, and I could remember who it was because I'd love to give credit. Um, but basically, they're talking about the path that these wise men took once they reached, you know, town that that they probably had in their mind um, that they're going to be going to the palace to see this baby, right. but they walked past the palace to the outskirts of town where this, this manger was. But in, in this direction, they, they were bringing the best gifts that they could bring. Yeah. And in that lowly place with these expensive gifts that they had, you know, they, they brought what they could give the best that they had to give, but the best thing that they did give, was when they bowed their knees in worship. And I think about that a lot, that a lot of our gift um, receiving um, comes when we are in, surrendered in worship. And, um, and I think that discernment comes at that time too. Um, so I just wanted to throw that one in there. Um, just a little tidbit to tie off that first part. Um, Oh, yeah, Lori. Yeah, exactly. I like that. Um, and then we also have to come to an understanding that um, no matter what we are giving, I want to say hi to um, Agnes and Nate and Dawn. I saw you guys pop on. 
I just didn't want to interrupt. Um, you know, the, um, in the giving and receiving, um, that we have to understand that um, how others receive is not up to us. You know, that um, it's not up to us to handle, I guess is the right way to say it. You know, that some just won't receive because they're not ready, um, because they're not able to. Um, and let's just be real. Sometimes some people just don't want to receive because it's you giving the gift. I mean, right. That out there. I mean, just stating the obvious. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I mean, but so you can't, I mean, in that, in any of those scenarios, you can't allow like offense or rejection, um, to come from those that are unable or unwilling. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Uh, <laughs> receive, you know, what the Lord has told you to gift. Hey, Fro. Um, if, if the Lord told you to give something, you do that in obedience and don't worry about how the others receive it. Because sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. And then it's not up to you to, um, you know, to figure that part out. Um, so, um I wanted to, there was a scripture I had. There was that Matthew 13, uh, 53 through 58. Um, and not to go through the whole thing, it's yeah. pretty long, but just the end of it where it says, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his hometown and among his own family. Um, and so he did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief where, you know, Jesus was received in so many places, but, um, you know, in their own hometown, um, he was not. And then if we even look at Jeremiah not being received by family members um, there in Jeremiah 12, I think it was five and six. Um, you know, it, we have to, when we're faced with things like that, where we're not received, um, we can't, um, you said this perfectly earlier, we can't, uh, you know, leave that with feelings of rejection and self-doubt. Um, but that we, you know, and that's a hard thing to get through. I know we've both had experiences with feeling that rejection and self-doubt as to whether or not, you know, we should even bother, you know, why should we even bother trying to go to others and, and feed into them or, or love them or encourage them or, you know, pretty much anything in our lives, especially when we're talking about our relationship with Christ, why should we do that if we're not being received? But, you know, there's someone else that they will receive from. It doesn't need to be us. And so we can't be upset when when we're looked upon as not being the one that they want to receive from. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely can't take it personal because if, if you know in the deepest parts of your soul that the Lord told you to speak that thing, give that thing, um, you know, whatever. Hey, Lori, it, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, it means, as long as you are walking in obedience and humility, I don't, you know, it, I mean, there's always going to be some kind of pushback at some point from someone. And when you know that you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do, you, you get to this place of just kind of like confidence and it's not a thick skin or anything like that, because I think we all need to continue to stay tender hearted. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, and understand, you know, other people's views have been on a completely different journey. But, um, you know, it, it's, you get to a point, you know what, this, I'm just going to release this in obedience. I'm just going to give this in obedience. And how it is received, that's up to God, because he told me to share this. He told me to give this. He called, told me to do this. So whoever is on the receiving end of that, that's God's work. You know, he told, if, I, if I'm give, doing the giving, he's going to work on the receiver's end of things. Right. And if that us as complete and total rejection, it's not you that they're rejecting. It's the gift that you are, you know, being obedient and giving. And, um, you know, and I think, you know, it can kind of, I don't know, it, you just, you just can't be, you can't hold yourself responsible for how people do or do not receive what you've given. Well, and sometimes we're to do like Christ did and just, um, you know, move on. Don't do so much there and move on and, 
and 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 let someone else come through that area in someone else's life. Sarah was asking what we were chatting on here today about, and oh, it's yeah. giving and receiving. Um, we were thinking about gifts and Christmas and things like that, and and um, how sometimes we get, uh, you know, gifts or promises or things from the Lord or things from others. And um, they didn't come how we expected them to be packaged. Um, and then now we're kind of getting into um, receiving and giving to others and um, how sometimes when we're not received by others, um, you know, how that can make us feel and how, how we go, go about with that. But something so you were just saying, you know, and we were talking about like if, if, Christ moved on and let and let that area go and and went about his way to perform miracles in one or other places and that made me think again back to the gentleman that told me in my marriage like okay you just need to love all you need to do is put out there is love that's such a huge gift if you are giving in love then you know whether or not it's received you are doing something and if you're not giving in love, then you're going to be contradicting whatever it is that you want the outcome to be. And yeah. um, so with that, you know, that's all I did. I continued to give in love, you know, until finally there was a breakthrough with Marty in his depression. And then, you know, so sometimes I guess there's a discernment into whether or not we really truly need to continue. Yeah. Um, trying to give to that person so often when when we should continue to give we throw up our hands and we do walk away and I don't want yeah. to mix that up with you know Christ knew that what he was doing there was not going to work so he moved on you know mm -hmm. to do his works in other areas but sometimes we're called to be persistent in the area and be obedient in our giving you know, until the right timing. And had I thrown my hands up and walked away and, and been like, well, he's not receiving my love. Forget about this. I'm done. You know, we would be divorced probably a good <laughs> two years now. <laughs> um, so, I mean, there's, and, and that's, you know, every situation's different, but that that's in my situation, had I, I needed to be persistent and not worry that it wasn't being received and it wasn't being recipro reciprocated. Yeah. And that is yeah. so right, Sarah, giving out of brokenness and giving out of wholeness is so different. Yes. Yeah. Cause it's, it's really, um, you know, when you're being the giver, um, so to speak, there's gotta be, um, you know, you, you got to be just ingrained with this um, spirit of humility and moved by love mm -hmm. and um, and moving under that gift of a servant's heart. You know, um, there there's so many people um, who they just want, you know, that that platform to speak from but they're not willing to make sure that the toilets are clean. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You have to, um, you have to like be functioning out of that gift of service and, you know, um, and keeping that, that perspective of, I need to approach cleaning the toilet with as much joy as I have sharing a prophetic word or a word of encouragement or, or whatever, or this message that God gave me to share, you know, it, it just, it all has to be done like in service, you know, and I, and I, the Lord took me to um, Luke uh, 22, 36, or I mean, not 36, but 26. Um, instead, the great be like the youngest and the one who rule like the one who serves and you know and and Jesus performed that beautifully for us to to model after you know he was always stooping down to lift that one person up yeah. and the elevation that he was ever at was on that cross it was always yeah. in service 
and and sacrifice. And if we are just looking for something, you know, then we're not going to be giving good gifts. We're going to be giving our pride instead of humility and service. And um, yeah, so that's just kind of what I was, where I was kind of heading in one part of my <laughs> quiet time was like just maintaining that, that proper perspective of service, humility, being motivated by love and obedience and in surrender. That's good. That's really good. You know, um, with that, I was looking up the definitions to giving and receiving, and I was going to start with like the giving, but with what you were just saying about um, what you were just discussing, I, I look at receiving and that's to acquire or take possession of to welcome. Um, we should be welcoming what others have to give. Um, we don't have to live or breathe it, but welcome the fact that they're willing to do something for us, that welcome the sacrifice that they're making in order, you know, and t in today's time, everything is a sacrifice. I mean, people don't have um, a lot of time to be doing much of anything. And so when people are going out of their way to make the time to give, whether you discern it's for you or, or not, you can still welcome it, whether you use it, whether you feel it's truly meant for you. Um, you know, that's, that's something to be decided upon, but, but to welcome it is, is a huge thing. I, when I read that word to welcome, we should welcome what anybody has to say for us and not be judgmental or critical um, or, you know, slam the door shut in their face. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I used to start receiving a lot um, just to, you know, be a little bit transparent. You know, I I didn't like receiving a lot because um, my pride, mm -hmm. that's exactly what it was, my pride um, didn't want, I mean, my pride perceived any gifts being given to me as I wasn't able to do for myself or provide for myself. I, it, you know, pride just always like just twisted the motive behind the person's like I just knew what they were you know right. talking about or the, what their motives were you know I was just assuming out of my pride and then it went from you know the Lord really took care of my pride problem and then out of you know that false humility became you know like oh I'm so unworthy you know and and it was my identity crisis moment <laughs> you know <laughs> But I lost my pride. I went into identity crisis. And, and then it was the whole, like, I'm unworthy. You know, I can't receive good things and I don't deserve it and all this stuff. So, you know, I was, I've been on both sides of that coin on the receiving end. And neither one of them are proper or correct or healthy. And um, so the Lord, you know, again, in the last six and a half years, he's really been working on me and, and saying, hey, I'm sending somebody, they're acting out of obedience to give to you, to gift to you, to bless you, whatever. You need to receive that and, and um, you know, in that humility and just pure um, love and gratitude that I'm sending you somebody, I'm sending something to you um, from me. And this person is being obedient to that. And, you know, and I, you know, in all the um, social media land, you know, you get to to hear and and um, read about all of these awesome ways that the Lord has shown up to give to his kids um, through other people. And it's inspiring and it's awesome. And, and you know, um, he brought me to two verses in Matthew chapter seven, of course, in seven. Um, verses seven and eight, you know, ask and it'll be given, seek and you will find everyone who asks receives, you know, in his will. And then seven eleven is if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give to those who ask, you know? And so if you're in prayer and you're asking for, 
you know, certain things to happen or, you know, answers or, you know, movement or, or whatever it is that you're interceding for. Um, like we were saying earlier, it may not come packaged the way you're kind of in that imagining, you know, right. anytime. I mean, I love my imagination because it goes completely crazy sometimes. And, you know, the Lord loves to tease me about it. But I also have to remind myself that although he gave me this incredible imagination about how he could possibly answer my, my prayers, I have to remind myself that I keep out telling him I want to be surprised. So no matter how vast right. And, right. and vivid my imagination is, he's going to do something outside of that, beyond my comprehension, um, and outside of that pretty bow package thing that I can fathom of how he's going to answer those things. And so I, I'm opening my, myself to be willing to receive however he wants to send that to me. Yeah, I like that. And I've definitely struggled with that in the past, for sure. Um, I'm sure I still struggle. I'm, I'm sure I'll still struggle again. Um, yeah. You know, he is the giver of every good gift. Um, I was just looking at that Matthew 16, 19 earlier, and it's kind of funny how different scriptures jumped out at both of us, and then sometimes the same scripture jumped out. Um, yeah. And this, and it just talked about... Um, bringing in, um, he will give us the keys of heaven, giving us the keys to the kingdom and whatever we ask for here will, will be. And with that, the keys can be looked at as an authority to announce forgiveness of sins, which is the ultimate gift that God has given us. Um, or the keys may be the, the gift of, the, of giving us the keys can be the opportunity to bring people to the kingdom of heaven you know, and, and just, you know, giving God glory throughout our lives and, and drawing others in through that giving, whether it's giving of time, giving of words, love, faith, hope, encouragement. And with that, God is, is using us to build the community of kingdom. And then that's where I think in both of our other lives, we talked about bringing heaven to earth through all of this giving and receiving. That's exactly what we're doing is bringing heaven to earth. And, and that's why we have to let the giving and receiving flow and, mm -hmm. and be willing to accept some things that maybe we wouldn't be willing to accept, welcome them, you know, with an open heart and open mind. And then also, be willing to give even when it's difficult to give to others. Um, and that just kind of randomly opened me to um, Acts 2, where, you know, once um, God gave them um, this gift, all the believers devoted themselves um, to the apostles, teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Um, and it goes on and on, but they came together as a community, and they received from one another, and they gave to one another, and they brought heaven to earth in that little community that they had. And, yeah. I mean, to me, that's just what I dream of here, so when it's tough for me to receive or tough to me for me to give in certain areas, I try to remember that that's what my goal is, to, is to have a community like that. And, um, you know, and that, and that goes for this, you know, I've always wanted to write because writing is just at your own desk in the privacy of your own home, not speaking. This is like, a death sentence for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I am accepting the package that God is putting this in for me. And if the community that I'm going to have is going to come through being obedient and doing something like this, then I'm willing to receive his gift and pay it forward. 
So yeah, I've got something that I have written all over the place, really. And it, it the Lord's I've always had a benevolent heart, but my my understanding of benevolence was very small and just focused on one particular form of benevolence. And of course, you always think about finances. And, mm -hmm. um, and the Lord has just really expanded that for me, given me wisdom over that. Um, and so what this thing I have written down is do what you can with what you have. And, you know, and so the Lord has just kind of been like, you know what, you know what you have right now, you have time with me. And, you know, I'm giving you some wisdom from your life and your journeys, you know, and so that's what we're going to share. And, you know, I've healed you on this and this and this and this, so share your healing. And, and that is a huge gift for some that are in the midst of struggling. And, um, you know, the whole point of going through valleys and reaching the side of the mountain, you don't just get to the side of the mountain and start celebrating. You're always turning back and looking where you came from. Well, every right, time you do, right, you're right. Gonna start going through the same thing. So if you're constantly looking to help others, to be benevolent with your time and with your wisdom and with your, with your, um, with your scars and wounds, I mean, you're going to be helping them get to that point and so on and so forth. It's that whole, you know, paying it forward thing. Um, you know, and I, I saw Sarah's um, uh, comment earlier about um, struggling with feeling like there's only strings attached. I totally know how you feel. I think, <laughs> all, I think we have all been there. Like you're, if you've been in any type of um, experience in any kind of relationship that has um, manipulation attached to it, you're like, you know, your sensors kind of go off and you're like, oh, no, 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 I'm not getting into that. I'm not getting into that. Here's the thing. That's where the discernment comes in because um, there's going to be times where that discernment, you know, gives you that red light. And you know what? It's okay. When that happens, the Lord is saying, you don't have to receive this gift. Mm -hmm. There are going to be those things that you're just going to have to say thank you, but no thank you. Um, and that, that's where it comes in. So if there really are strings attached to that, um, with that spirit of manipulation or whatever you want to call it, the control factor, um, you know, that lording over that kind of happens like, oh, if I give you this, then you have to do this. Or, you know, it's like, so it wasn't really a gift. You know, it can, t it can go all those ways. Um, the Lord's going to tell you, you know what? No, I don't want you to, to receive that. That's not a gift from me. And um, so I think if you just have a piece about that, just knowing that, you know, whatever comes your way, the Lord's going to show you if it's him or not. And it's going to be very evident about that. Um, so, yeah, I just I think the whole, you know, gift giving, um, it, it's, it's a benevolent spirit that he gives you. And, you know, if we are all filled with Holy Spirit, we have a benevolent spirit about us because that's what we are to do. We are to give of ourselves and give of our time and, you know, wisdom and, and, you know, finances and, and resources and stuff like that is, is part of your, your ammunition. Then, you know, the Lord's going to tell you how to give that. He's going to mm -hmm. give you that wisdom um, to, to disperse and be that heavenly funnel. Did you have something else to add to that? I didn't want to cut you off. Oh, no, you're you're good. I, I had two things pop into my mind and they're gone that quick. I get really distracted. <laughs> I know I, I've had to like look at the camera. So I'm not like reading. the <laughs> um, No, I, I think I, I kind of wrapped up all the notes that I had. I mean, I had a few things come to mind while you're talking. You know, um, I was just thinking back, I guess, uh, a couple times where people may not have received from me in the past. And then God can sometimes bring that full circle um, and kind of redeeming you in another way where suddenly you are being received by that person and they actually mm -hmm. come to you because they actually heard you the first time you were giving to them. They actually heard it. They just didn't welcome it. And so mm -hmm. then you left that place. Yeah. And then here they've called me 
back in some areas. I'm sure that's happened to you. And then mm -hmm. there is a much easier giving and flowing, giving and receiving flowing between us um, with a few different people in my life, which has made it really nice. I, and, you know, that's where I've had to relax when instead of getting those hurt feelings or feeling, you know, you know, kind of let down and doubtful when I haven't been received is I kind of now I'm in a place 99% of the time where I can say, well, if I'm not to be received right now, then, you know, God will make something happen where I am later or it's okay. Mm -hmm. They'll receive from someone else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's where I've just kind of come to the understanding is that, you know, we're all on these journeys and they're all different timed and, and the way the paths are laid out and sometimes they crisscross and sometimes they don't. And, you know, and, and during those journeys with everyone, some are at a place when you intersect and they're willing to hear and you're willing to receive and hear and learn, you know, all that stuff. And then sometimes they crisscross and nobody's ready, <laughs> you know, nobody's ready to, to give and nobody's ready to receive. And, and it's a learning moment. You know, there's always going to be something gleaned from those crisscrossing paths, I whether it's you know, receiving, <laughs> um, giving, or, you know, where did we go wrong? What didn't I hear? That kind of thing. So um, there's always something to be, to be learned in those processes. And, and yeah, I mean, there's just, you know, some <clears throat> aren't, aren't able or willing or ready to hear or give. Um, I have to say, just like you and I are on here right now together, I don't know if Josie's still wa watching, but her mom and I uh, served on the PTA together. So sometimes you have to team up with someone else that people will receive from. <laughs> And so, like, Rebecca was very good at getting, you know, a point across about so many different things where I was nervous and scared and timid. Um, and I'm sure, like, you know, we balanced one another out very well. So sometimes walking around and doing things in teams, I'm sure, like, the apostles did, you know, um, is a huge help. That just, I don't know why that came up, but that just, you know, that's true. You know, mm -hmm. yep. Sometimes you have to team up with someone where some people will receive from them better than they will from you. So say, yeah, and you, mom, that, you can't you can't ever um, you can't ever take it personal. You know, that's what we were saying earlier. You can't take it personal. Um, you know, because in their mind, it might be you. <laughs> you know, it, it's their own. You know, it's their own. Uh, their own issues. Um, you know, if that's unresolved between the two of you, then you should probably take care of that. You know, go back to last week's to uh, comment or topic right. and get the forgiveness taken care of. But, <laughs> you know, um, but you know, a lot of times um, those that aren't willing or ready to receive from you, most of the time, 99% of the time, maybe not that high of a percentage, but most of the time they're just, they're just not ready to receive anything from you. Um, but like you said, they would probably be a lot more open to receive from others, but you just can't take it personal. No. Um, cause it, it's, you know, most of the time it's, it's not you. Thanks. So. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it's not that. You. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to say, um, before we wrap this up, if anyone has any, hi, Mrs. Snyder, how are you? I hope you're doing well. That's one of my um, church family. And also her son went to high school with me. Love that family. Um, if anyone has any topics that they want to talk about on here, we welcome mm -hmm. you to bring up topics to us. Just message us. Um, we know that we want to talk on the different ways that we hear from God and how we were interested in how other people hear from God. We know that we want to talk on signs and miracles and wonders that we've um, experienced ourselves and hear about uh, things that other people have experienced. Um, there's all kinds of stuff we want to talk about. I mean, the list get literally, I think it's two pages in my journal, but we always try to hear from God during the week as to what it is. And then we finally, 
um, confirm it. Hi, Angel. Um, we confirm it like right beforehand and kind of pin down what we need to put together the, the last day or two, but mostly it's what's God spoken to us on the last week. But if there's a topic that comes up and it's something that God is also pressing on our hearts, we'll absolutely talk about it on here and maybe even pull you on if you want to be pulled on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As I say, we've had this list for three weeks now and we have yet to be able to talk about anything that's on the list because the Lord <laughs> has just given us these other things. Um, but I think it, it really just really ties into like, you know, what I've been feeling about the, this final month, the end of this year is just this, this final tweaking and refinement um, that he's doing in each and every one of us on an individual basis. And just, you know, as the church and um, it's been very, very evident about, you know, what he's been kind of showing me just with myself and um, you know, what I've heard others um, saying and sharing well, there's so many things that come up, yeah. like in our news feeds that draw our attention. And and we're like, oh, we want to talk about that. I mean, I think we could get on here two or three nights a week and fill the time. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, we would, I mean, because this is round table, can I talk, round table discussion. Um, yeah, we would love to um, bring you guys in on that and, and have that. And Topic Audrey people... brought up possibly talking about on dreams and how, how we know that they are God given. Oh yeah. Um, That's a good most... one too. Use you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally Especially... joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, not totally. So much joking. <laughs> you got it, Audrey. We will do that for sure. For sure. Yeah. Okay, well, yep. thank you, everyone, for hopping on. We appreciate anyone that watches this on the replay. And join yeah. us every Tuesday night. Um, we'll try to start between 8.30 and 9 Eastern Standard Time um, each week. Uh, um, maybe closer to 9 for me as far as getting home from work and being able to be prepared. Um, so I'm sorry if that's a little too late. But, um, you know, if we hop on a little early, we'll let you know. <laughs> Love you, Brad. Guys, thanks for jumping on. Always appreciate you guys and your support. And um, yeah, so let us know um, if there's something that you guys want to talk about and, um, and we'll get it on the books. Hi, Deidre. Okay, Good we'll night. see you all later. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.